Did anyone happen to read the current newsletter? Yes. Great. Did you happen to read the poems in the newsletter? That was our seminary's class interpretation of the scriptures that I'm going to share with you this morning. Um, they used the Luke reference, but I'm going to use Matthew, but it's the same idea. Um, let's see. Do not worry for your life, nor what you will eat or drink, nor for your body what you will wear. Behold, is not life much more important than food and body and clothing? Observe the birds of the sky. They do not sow, neither do they harvest nor gather into barns, and yet your Father in heaven feeds them. Are you not much more important than they? And who is among you who by worrying can add one cubit to his stature? Why do you worry about clothing? Observe the wild flowers, how they grow. They do not get tired out, nor do they spin. But I say to you that not even Solomon, with all of his glory, was arrayed like one of these. Now if God clothes in such fashion the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow falls into the fire, is he not much more mindful of you, O you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry or say, what will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we be clothed? For the worldly people seek after these things, and your Father in heaven knows that all of these things are also necessary for you. And your Father in heaven knows that all of these things are also necessary for you. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. And a few chapters earlier, it says, when you pray, your Father already knows what you need before you ask. Every need that we have is a part of God consciousness. There are no secrets. So that's where we're going to begin. Seek ye first, thank you, Lisa, the kingdom of God. Everybody take a breath. Beautiful scripture, isn't it? Did it make you feel warm and loved? Did it make you feel silly when you were picking out your clothes this morning? No. <laughs> Seek you first the kingdom of God. In our traditional theology, we have been taught that this idea of the kingdom of God is something that we will experience in our later life. On the other side, the kingdom of God exists outside the realm of the world earthly consciousness. As metaphysicians, we know that the word kingdom actually means counsel or presence of God. Seek ye first the counsel or presence of God, and all these things will be added unto you. Changes the meaning, doesn't it? Changes the idea of something far away that we will one day achieve if we stay on the path. And it's almost like a reward for our journey. It becomes more an interactive moment. Seek ye first the counsel and the presence of God, and all these things will be added unto you. How many of us, though, when we go about our day in business, we tend to act like that prodigal son. You know that beautiful parable? I'll remind you of it. It's a parable that Jesus told of two sons, uh, apparently their father was wealthy, and the younger son went to the father and said, please may I have all of the inheritance that you're going to give me when you cross over, or at the appointed time. Let me have it and let me go out into the world so that I can see what I can do with this stuff. And the father graciously said, great, take it. And the father gave the child all of the wealth that, that was coming to him. And then the child enthusiastically went out into the world and started to live and started to do things. And the scripture says that he was quite inventive and quite creative and squandered all of the wealth, only to find himself feasting with the pigs as he tended them. I think the prodigal son reminds us of what happens when we walk away from the supply and support of our Father and other God. Let me see what I can do with this. 
we all say it all the time, let me see what I can do here. When you say that, you have just said, everybody back off, I'm going to use my own energy, and I'm going to accomplish something here. I will either succeed or I will fail. And where is God in that comment? Take a step back, God, because I need to see what I can do with this. And this is how we live our lives. This is how we step outside of the kingdom of God. This is how we step outside of the flow. We think we need to know how we can accomplish something by ourselves. And our metaphysical class, we teach that when your focus is on the worldly things, you will end up in a famine. You will end up in lack. We have to have that spiritual connection. So, this is what they said. The, the child, the prodigal child, is a part of all of this, yes? Mm -hmm. They said, true dependence occurs when you access all of the support that is around you. Dependence is to rely on something. Independence is to find your space in the flow of life. Yet when we as people seek to be independent, seek to find our uniqueness, we immediately step outside of the flow of God's support. Because it's up to me to do this. Let me see what I can do about this. Do you see? Imagine what it would be like to walk in the presence and the guidance of God always. The presence and the guidance of God always. Many a savvy shopper out there and you become very savvy when the funds begin to atrophy. Do you understand? Some of us, when we have ample funds, we shop away. Some of us, when the funds become a little bit narrower, we become very savvy and we learn very quickly to take God with us. And we learn, God, we have a need and God guides us where to go for the perfect, really good deal, for the perfect, really good expression, and then we call it a miracle, don't we? So. Dependence is relying. Independence is the ability to flow in the whole. Why do we take ourselves out of the garden of God's love? Because we have this wonderful gift and it's called a will. And we think that our will is so fabulous, and it really is. But we have this feeling that we cannot function, our will cannot function in the garden of God abundance. But yet it does, doesn't it? When we live in the kingdom of God, we still get to choose. We still get to choose. In the scripture it says, seek first the counsel and kingdom of God and all your needs will be supplied to you. And it does not say any script will be given to you of everything that you need to say, do, speak, and create because you are now the puppet of creator. It says God's going to supply your needs so that you can then go out and be radiant and shine and be resplendent. So you can go out and be the divine child of God. Everybody take a breath. All right. It's the same quest that we've been on for many lifetimes. How do we come to this place, live in love, and stay connected with God while we are creating beautiful things to draw our attention, while we are experiencing all the wonders around us? It's our quest. You know, with me. You know what it feels like to be in the counsel of God? You know what it feels like to be on your own? You know you can choose. You know you forget to choose. 